Ladies and gentlemen, you are not gonna see me at all again throughout this video, so it's not about me, but I am here to let you know if you hit that subscribe button before Friday or before the end of the day Friday when you're seeing this, you're gonna be entered to win a pair of Goat Lane shoes. Any pair you want off their website, all you have to do is be subscribed. So hit that button, enjoy the video. What's up, dude? How are you? Good to meet good you. Good to see you. Good to meet you, too. Uh, oh, I got this big awkward bag to bring in That's here. all right. That's all right. Lugging it through the city or what? Lugging it through the city, you know? Good to finally meet you, man. Yeah, you too, dude. Yeah, you yeah. too. So, it's been a while. You're taller than I expected. I know. That's what people think. That's what I everyone think tells me. Like, I yeah, get that a lot, too. People think that I'm like 5'10", 5'9". Yeah. But are you 6'4"? No, I'm like 6'2", but okay. like tall enough. Yeah, yeah, tall, tall enough. enough. Tall yeah. enough that people are like, there's some height to it. There's some height to it, exactly. Yeah. How's yeah, the yeah. Best Western Plus? Downtown? It's good, man. It's uh, low budget, just like me, and uh, it works. <laughs> I love when you text me, you're like, oh, I'm going to splurge. I'm going to have a little staycation. <laughs> I was expecting like a Paramount. Well, you text so, me, you're like, oh, I'm at the Best Western. I'm like, wow, Yeah. Max so really balling. <laughs> what happened was I went and looked, and it was like $500. I'm like, no, nah, forget that. <laughs> yeah. not. This place was still like 200 bucks a night. So. Yeah, and you're right by the water, which is kind of nice. It's a good location. Why Whole are you here? Location. Um, literally just no reason just oh, floating just love floating it. through life love yeah. it yeah well it's funny because like these episodes historically i'm your the inaugural golf episode which is fun there but historic most, most hated guy on golf social media right <laughs> no here. no not even close <laughs> Riggs has got you by a landslide that's true um anyways the they're usually like a day well they are a day in life and like most people you go to their house you see what day in their life is but for you i feel like you've literally been home for less than like what 14 calendar days this year probably? yeah like it's i don't really have people ask if i have a home base i don't have a home base anymore I'm it's like, so I'm crazy pretty man. much live out of a suitcase and uh i go home to see the family and that's about it which is awesome obviously get home and see them quite a bit but and right now i have no nothing strapping me down so i may as well just go see the world and, and do something that i love every day so yeah, that's dude. my main thing well, we're gonna talk a lot more yeah. about that but look at this golf bag wow freshy, freshy. a freshy bag is yeah, that I'm you? The first trip with it. That's you, right? That's like my whole Lefty Gang logo. Yeah, I mean, lefties—they're familiar up here, not or like Canada, but yeah. the rest of the hockey. world. There's like people are kind of—you get the comment all the time, like, "Oh, isn't it like less than like one percent of golfers or something like so, that?" I think it's slowly growing because of other sports. Like I know mm. in Australia, like there's quite a few lefties coming because of like the athletic background of people, but. Yeah, for whatever reason, like Canada's oh hockey, obviously. I think it's like, isn't it like forty percent lefty in Canada? Yeah, I was a, I'm a lefty in hockey, but a righty in golf. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, I was lefty in hockey and lefty in batting, lefty in everything, but I'm yeah. right hand dominant. Oh, that is well. That, Phil Mickelson's the same. Phil, I think most no, actually not a big deal. No, he's uh, most guys are, but I think it actually helps because it's like when I'm lead side dominant with everything. Yeah, like, well, it explains the ambidextrousness. Too, yeah, with I guess golf. that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see. Uh, the big goal is to do the righty more often try to get to scratch oh yeah i saw that was that on youtube you posted that i'm gonna so i did like my first i just launched the youtube it's brand new but yeah, i um, i did yeah, thanks it's been a long time coming but yeah i know i remember you telling me you were filming them it was like in the middle of summer well we, we just wanted to bank a bunch of hours the, yeah. the thing was was because i'm doing it with two of my buddies who i don't want to do it on my own yeah you no. understand how difficult editing mm -hmm. cutting all the the nonsense behind the scenes the easy part is putting it out yeah um, so I don't want to deal with that. I don't even own a laptop. Like I'm literally the most low budget <laughs> online person ever. So for me, it's like a phone and that's it. So two of my buddies own like videography company here in Canada yeah. and it's, uh, they're essentially going to do all my videoing, editing, all the backend analytics bullshit. Do. Yeah. And then I'm just going to, um, show up and toss a smile on my face and Absolutely. play golf. So that's, we've got a bunch of videos now we can like kind of release once every like bi-weekly probably right now. And then, mm -hmm. um, but we got some good plans to kind of get it pumping shortly here i got some cool ideas i think sweet i don't have a clue what i'm doing but how often do you lose your golf bag i feel like traveling with golf bags is I've like lost a stressful my clubs thing four times this year but they've all come the one was pretty bad i uh, lost them for like a week Oof. um but luckily taylor made's taking good care of me they actually gave me a duplicate set oh wow it's not the exact same because i have some like older bats in there which yeah. i'm sure we'll we'll see when we're out playing today but yep. um a couple of them if i lose i'm Hoop. can be pretty hoop so yeah um but majority of them are just like yeah just replaceable so it's not the end of the world where did you just come from this is all the clothes you have uh, i have some stuff in my car i lay you i don't want to like bring it in and out like, i have some stuff Do you have a car a rental, rental car? car oh okay a rental car. Yeah, yeah, yeah rental car um while i'm here and then 
yeah so i just keep a lot of it in there i have because i leave for new zealand in a few days so i have like a <laughs> massive suitcase i'm not gonna lug in here i don't need most of the stuff so yeah just uh cruising man all right what's yeah. next what's next for you have you eaten anything yet Are you gonna do no, breakfast? What's that? we're gonna rip a breakfast I think, right. I, I think we need to go to i mean anyone that knows me knows that i'm like a big tim hortons oh yeah obsessed with tim you hortons. get do you get uh star to that internationally do they uh, have well, to they have to, in dubai they have tim hortons now oh, okay so big into the uh dubai tim hortons i'll dabble but mm -hmm. yeah, for the most part um, what's this some fruit some yeah. fruit went to the grocery store i forgot about it did Maybe. you wow oh. How often do you go to a grocery store? I must be once in a blue moon, eh? Yeah, well, to be honest, one? like, on, a, on the road, like, I, I don't eat a lot of fast food. Like, I try to eat relatively healthy, which obviously can be pretty difficult with, mm -hmm. like, um, the times, like, not a lot of cheap options. That I'm no, no. And obviously, when I'm eating out three meals a day. Adds up. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's not... Uh, not paying rent probably helps, though, right? Honestly, it's like... Yeah, like I don't have any overhead. My biggest phone, <laughs> my biggest, my car's paid for back home. It's just in a garage, never gets touched. Yeah. Um, I literally don't have expenses in my life. Huh. Like, it's not a bad way to look. Stairs. Like, that's like the worst elevator. Yeah, it was kind of sketchy. Yeah, it was kind of sketchy. I feel like this hotel is like minimum like a hundred years old. Uh, yeah. But I mean, the location's great. The location's like, great. I don't know. I don't even know if there's a Tim Hortons down here. We might have to do Starbucks, which is fine. I just still think it's hilarious that this is your, uh, I'm gonna take a staycation choice. <laughs> to be fair though, like, so when I do these like events around the world, like I, uh -huh. I'm not a high class citizen by any means. I am yeah. like, so I, and that's something that I get a lot on the, the internet is like people look at the lifestyle I live and they automatically assume I come from billions of dollars. Like gotcha. my mom's a nurse, my dad's a teacher. Yeah. Very like just middle-class Canadian family. Yeah. And everything I've done with golf is just from connections. You see right. it? Like people yep. are willing to help you if you're a good person and you. Dude, somebody bought me this entire there. bag of clubs, and it wasn't a brand deal. That's what I mean. Someone, Someone just DM me five grand and was like, "There's a fun. lot of people that have more money than they know what to do with." Yeah. And if you show them a little bit of like love or support, yeah, they're on it, and yeah. they're gonna take care of you. And I think that's something that's been so cool for me is like I've connected with people that probably never. Uh, never even imagined that it was possible to connect with yeah. just from golf yeah so yeah like now when i travel i obviously get to stay in these like extravagant places but yeah. it's just not me right like i do not care like it doesn't need to be five star i don't need that crazy dining experience i literally just need some food to fill me in a bed to sleep on so the bmw rental car isn't doing you any favors i did that, but... okay but it's, i signed with bmw <laughs> oh did you? yes yeah, so bmw Holy crap. Um, that's like one been one of the cool partnerships that i've kind of they wanted just a normal guy because like BMW's always known as like the rich white man yeah, vehicle. Wow. So they're like, they want to be a little bit more common so that I can kind of get BMW's kind of wherever I go as long as I give them a little heads up and wow. which is cool. Well, if you ever want to be an agent for somebody, I'm, I'll, I'll take, I'll take one of those BMW sponsorships. It's not a bad, it's not a bad little gig, man. Oh, Again, I don't, to be honest, I rent a lot of time because I don't want to have to deal with the, like sending him a message and being like, oh, can I get a car? Yeah. And, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just not really worth it for me. So. All right. I'm wondering if we should walk to that Starbucks. There's one like right there. We can go yeah. down by that water. Yeah, let's do it. Let's just do that. I feel like it's easier. <laughs> no, that's very true. The city? I would just go to Tim Hortons drive through but it's like, there is none. Yeah, so. there is none. Yeah. I feel safer to have my golf clubs with your golf clubs in there. Yeah, you know, I, to be honest, I've never had anything stolen in my life. <laughs> um, have you ever I'm been like, to I'm pretty... <laughs> That's true. Actually. There's parts of Vancouver. What part are you in? Uh, I'm in the East Fan, but like past the like East Fan, you might think of as like a bad East Fan. Oh, wow, what a day, eh? We do have a frost delay, though. I feel like you probably anticipated that. Yeah. The, so but that's right. It's no big deal. It's expected. It's expected. Other than that, it's, it's gonna year. be beautiful. It's like 10 degrees in the sun. Uh, this time of year, it's why I love like the West Coast. Like obviously, I grew up in Toronto, um, north of Toronto, like an hour north of the city, and. I've kind of based myself out here strictly because of it's uh, the weather is just like a little bit more manageable when it's I the am only in place Canada. You can get it. You can play golf. 100%. People like the golf is good in the winter. If you get like a day like this in the yeah. winter where it's a little crisp, but like it, not a lot of wind, like yeah. I actually really enjoy it. So mm -hmm. it's kind of um, way better than just sitting and fighting seasonal depression in Toronto. Absolutely. So. 
I watched Grant's Pebble Beach video yesterday. Yeah. And he was talking about how frozen it was that morning, how the ball was <laughs> going to go nowhere. And it was 55 degrees Fahrenheit. And I put that into the conversion to Celsius. It was like 13 degrees Celsius. I'm like, that is a balmy day in Canada. I am. Um, like, my yardages must be just so off. It literally, so I like. They were all complaining about it on that California trip. They're like, this is so cold. I'm like, dude, I'm like, I'm hot right yeah. now. Like, I, that's the one thing I feel like if you grew up in Canada, like you just, uh, it just becomes part of you. It doesn't really leave you yeah. in terms of like the cold weather is just fine. Like it's so manageable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like I could stay at a dump of location. This is pretty, yeah, I know. Uh, this is, it's nice down here. Like I'm so close to Listen, the, I don't even think you know what we should do? What? We should go rip over the Fraser, uh, the pitch and putt. Have you done yeah. that? The Stanley Park one? I wonder if they have a frost layer now. Sure, yeah, we can check it out. Absolutely, I have played like there. I love it. I love pitch and like putt. The best thing ever. Literally the best thing ever. Yeah, pitch and putt's a lot of fun. If we have a frost layer, we could go at least check it out. See yeah. if they'll let us on. I don't know if they will or not. Listen, this is your day. I'm just following you along, man. Whatever Mac wants, Mac gets. That's how this is going to work. It's probably golf and a lot of golf. Great, I love it. It's all Christmassy in here. What's your Starbucks? I'm a cold brew guy, not a hot coffee guy. Even this time of year? Easily, yeah. Interesting. I mean, Tim Hortons, I feel bad cheating on Tim Hortons. Like, <laughs> Tim Hortons is like my thing. Um, but I'm like a chocolate cream cold brew. A grande chocolate cream cold brew. Yep. Um, I'm gonna do the bacon and egg gouda. It's a very cute little first date here with all the uh, sure is, man. Christmas background. The music, yeah, it's basically just us in there. I'm surprised, actually. How do you like manage nutrition when you travel this much? Like, do you really? I eat like a bird. I don't eat very much. Yeah. So, like, I was... and I'll go to grocery stores, get fruit. Like, I'm a big try to have fruit at least once a day yeah. when I can. Yeah. Um, but it's hard. Like, obviously, like when I'm on the road all the time. Yeah. Again, I'm lucky with like a lot of events and stuff I do. They take like good care of you with like your meals and stuff are like crazy like you yeah. get like just the royal treatment way more royal than i deserve <laughs> so for the most part it's like pretty easy to stay on top of it now i'm going to new zealand this next like um next week and i'm staying in my buddy's garage he's got like a bed in a garage <laughs> like it's the most low budget ghetto place ever but it's like i love it like yeah. I just wake up and go golf every day all yeah. by myself yeah. i feel like that would be like for me personally the hardest part like when i travel like eating, for me, it's eating enough. Cause like, I'm kind of like you, like an ectomorph. And like, if I don't eat, uh, my body will drop to like 175 and like just stay super lanky. So like to keep on any size, I have to eat like 5,000 calories a day. It's crazy. Dude, I'm 164 pounds. <laughs> That's insane. I'm 195 and I'm at least an inch shorter than you. Yeah, 160, uh, 164. I do, like, I, I'm actually physically can't, I'm not allowed to like lift heavy weights. Like I have, Sure, I've, I've probably told some people will know this already, but I, when I was younger, I was on like I swam competitively, was, played hockey, played every, like everything high impact. Yeah. Started having really bad headaches, and they essentially found like a cyst in the middle of my brain that was giving me concussion symptoms every time I did anything high impact or like got my heart rate up. Huh. It was bruising the inside of my brain. Huh. So then went and saw a doctor, and they're like, you need to kind of give up anything high impact. So I started golfing. So now I can't huh. like lift weight. I go see a neurosurgeon like every once in a while just to make sure it's not like growing. It's benign. It doesn't grow, but the location of it they can't operate on it it's just like a part of me but i can't do anything without having headaches that's why i golf i did not choose golf golf <laughs> cho chose me that's crazy mm -hmm. wow i did not know that story yeah that's interesting mm -hmm. so it's big it's like this big i have a picture of it somewhere i might be able to send you it just uh, so you see it it's, it's messed up it's like yeah <laughs> that's crazy so you can't you can't even like go for a run I can go for like a job, I just have to be careful. Right. Like I, I have to just do everything I do is like very much in moderation. I can still like do stuff, like I'm still like a big skier. I love skiing, I love snowboarding. So right. like I just can't go and like huck a backflip off a cliff anymore. I have to like just go down the hill like and... What do you mean you can't jump off a cliff? Because if, if you hit the water, that's the impact? Like that's the problem? If you like, if I like, if I smash my head, like it could just like, I just have huh. to be careful. Interesting. Like, I have to had to make like a big time lifestyle change. What what happens if you like do that a bunch? Uh, like you get concussion symptoms, but what does that actually throw lead to? up? Like just need to sit in a dark room and not do anything, and like literally like dizzy. Just it's like a mess. Like it's oh. the worst. Like picture the worst headache you'd ever have. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. That well, I've had punched in the head. So like, it it yeah, is just it's like, like you're getting punched in the head essentially. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. huh. 
Is that is that literally how you started golfing? Was because you found that Pretty out? Much, yeah. So you, how old are you? 17, 18. Interesting. Okay. So late compared to like a lot of people. Yeah. And like, yeah, I get kind of like picked apart a lot online because like, why are you playing like that? I play because I enjoy golf. Yeah. And that's like coming from like a background of like skiing, snowboarding, hockey, like yeah. more fast impact, high impact sports are like fast moving. Yes. To be in golf, that's like a five hour round where you're like, it's an absolute snooze fest for me. Yeah. I lose interest. Yeah. So for me, I'd rather go and like hit two cool shots during a round. Yeah. And I'm like, that was sick. Yeah. Rather than, I can still go out and shoot a score. Like yeah. I'm not, I'm not a chop. I played yeah. a pro event a month and a half ago, shot 71. Like there's, yeah. it's still there when I need to dial it in, but mm -hmm. I just don't enjoy golf like that I need to like be that stimulation of like hitting a cool shot is way more impactful than like a score for me now yeah which again I get abused online because like I'll be in like a video with somebody and like who don't know who I am and they're I'm just not really taking it overly seriously just right. messing around and obviously the comments is that referencing to a good good video the good good was like the start of it I mean you still get it on my own video so like, yeah it's people that don't know the good good one was like obviously they they are like social media golf like yeah. Grant or uh, Garrett is like the OG guy yeah. like he so their following like is uh, obviously they've got a very cult like following that's gonna mm -hmm. like stand by them so like when you go on something people didn't know who I was yeah. they only see me posting my like good shots and highlights in my rounds because yeah. I'm not posting the negatives Yeah. Um, and then I go and play a scramble format with them to be honest that's probably been like the lowest point of like and I messaged Garrett saying this. I was like, dude, I'm getting so much hate from this. Like, this yeah. is this is miserable. Like, I don't... I, if I'd known that this was going to be the extent of it, it would have been... Um, it wouldn't have been worth it for me to do yeah. this. I just came to hang out with cool people and yeah. connect with some other people and have a laugh. And yeah. That's what it was. Like, I played with Bobby, Steve, and um, Luke Clanton. And it's a scramble format. Yeah. <laughs> I was just slashing it around. Like, yeah. if Buddy's already in there to 10 feet, like, I'm going to try to hit a 900-yard hook around yeah. a tree to get there. And I hit some bad shots, I hit some really good shots, and the comments were just like, this guy sucks, like he's a fraud. Yeah. Uh, this just proves that this guy doesn't know what he's doing. And I'm like, you realize that like, this is me trying to play like the most ridiculous style of golf. Yeah. On a, With cameras everywhere, with a bunch of dudes I don't know. Yeah. Like, good luck, it's yeah. hard. So, I, it was a little like, I think that was the first time where I was like, I'm like comfortable with my own skin, but the first time I was like, Social media is like kind of a nasty place. Yeah. So, um, but then I just realized, like, yeah, yeah, day, it, it really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. But it wasn't great. Yeah, it weighs on you a lot more than you realize. But totally, and that's what, I think what people don't understand is at the end of behind all these like social media people, there is a real person. Right. They might hide behind a persona, but for me, I think. What I've been trying to like be really consistent with, and I've said this to my family, is like the minute you see a, a tiny bit of change with like me as in my behavior, or like be, as I like get bigger and bigger with like the social media following, like take me back and slap me around a little yeah, bit, like bring right. me back, like level me. I won't get to that point. Like yeah. at the end of the day, I'm still the exact same person as I was three years ago when I was living in New Zealand full time, yeah. off the grid, didn't even use social media. Like I just love golf. And now I have like a platform to showcase how I play golf and like the cool places I travel that I was doing before I had social media. Right. Um, but it's tough when I've always got along with everyone. I've always yeah. been like the guy who gets along with the, the cool kids, the middle kids and the kids who are getting picked on. Like I yeah. tried to just treat everyone nice and it's super weird having guys who hate my guts. Right. Because I post a golf video. Yeah. It's like, sure. I just can't wrap my head around it. Yeah. That's why you probably see like I, I give a little shout outs to some of the haters yeah. sometimes. and try to show a little accountability which i don't know is a good or a bad idea but i just do it because yeah like, why not yeah but it's that's been the hardest part by far it's like why, why does it have to be like that in the world the world's yeah. filled with negativity already why don't we all just be like half decent human beings yeah. treat each other nicely and yeah we don't have to agree on the same thing there's plenty of stuff that you agree on and i don't agree on yeah and vice versa but we can't we should still be able to go and like spend quality time and like hang out and it shouldn't matter yeah but the world's so divided and that's what i hate about it yeah i, I always try to like use a ratio scale in my brain because like it is tough but it's like you know realistically if you were to, the, the problem i think is that we take such large sample sizes of humanity that are impossible to take unless you're like the ruler of a country historically totally. you know what i mean like if we have tens of thousands of people watching you hundreds of thousands of people watching everything you post 
It's like you take ten thousand people, one of them's a serial killer. Like it's just, it's, but like, and I'm legitimately saying they're a serial killer. Like they're gonna go to jail. Like out of every ten thousand people, guaranteed one of them's gonna kill someone. So yeah, like, yeah. I mean, no, it's so true. that large of sample sizes, there are crazy people, and those crazy people, this is their new outlet. You know yeah, yeah, I understand. And my theory too is like, I'd say ninety percent of the world is amazing. Yeah, just normal people that want to like help each other, push each other, all that. Then you have like the five percent on social media that are like obsessed with you, like want everything to do with you. Yeah. Like, where are you going? What are you doing? Like, mm-hmm. love everything you're doing. And, yep. and then you have that five percent that are like just haters, that, like, yeah. hate their own life. And I do think that it stems from like I don't know when we were growing up, like. Having like those kids that got picked on, yeah. they didn't have a platform to give it back. They yeah. just took this all this abuse and would have yeah. to go home to their family and like hate their life. Yeah. Super sad. Yeah. And now they have a platform that they can feel like they give it back to someone who looks like successful or yeah. someone that. So it makes me actually feel a little bit bad for them. Yeah. But I just don't feel the need to ever go write a negative comment on anything I see on so- online. Yeah. It would just never even cross my mind. Maybe it was the way I was brought up. Yeah. I'm sure that you think the exact same way. Yeah, like for sure. At the end of the day, it's just not necessary. Yeah. Me. So well, I'll get people who ask me that all the time. They're like, oh, like I looked you up and like I saw this negative thing or I saw this or whatever. Or like, hey, how do you deal with this? And it's like, basically, it's exactly what you said. It's just like, well, I mean, have you ever commented anything negative or something? And they're always like. No, and I'm like exactly like most normal people who you would actually choose to interact with in real life happen, and like the people who have like I try to just like deploy empathy in my brain of like I would never do that because I'm very happy in my life and everything I have around me is positive and like if I don't think someone's doing something that I agree with, okay, I just don't watch or I walk away or whatever. 100%. It's like the people who cling on to things that piss them off just to call that negativity like that's just an unhappy person and like yeah, what's it called? Uh, Stanley Park pitch Stanley and putt. Park, What's a pitch and putt for those who don't know? So like, we got a, how many are in Vancouver? There's this the so only many. place. To be honest, it's the only place in Canada that has them. There's like yeah. four of them here. That's what started there. me playing golf. So during COVID, they're pretty much like a Muni style. Normally nine holes, sometimes more. I think. Are they 18 right here? This one's 18. This one's 18. One of the ones that I play sometimes is nine, but it's like super cheap. You can show up. Guys bring like a little friggin' cooler beer and just like. Yeah. A one club putter yeah. and every hole is like under 100 yards it's like bigger version of mini putt yeah would you say that i guess yeah but you're hitting shots I, it's like a par three course but just shorter yeah exactly hey clubs are still here that's good i think we're gonna this is a good secure parking lot all right there's a camera right above my car so i don't well, think they're gonna good. pick this car <laughs> it's cold it's so cold in here oh, black leather seats foul. Foul. what do you do when you're traveling and you're not playing golf Outdoors, I mean, I'm a big skier. I, skiing's like my one, like I would choose skiing over golf any day. Yeah. Um, Is that just because you play golf so much, kind of for a living? Or because yeah. you genuinely like I just, I just love skiing, to be honest. Make sure I get these directions before I start driving. No texting and driving. Yeah, it's, no, that's not what's <laughs> happening here. It's okay, you're not here enough for them to follow you and track you down. Yeah, I wish I could tell you, but I've only lived here for a year now, and I definitely don't know how to get around, especially Dude, this side this of the city. This city is, I find this city just super complicated to begin with. Yep. Um, Agreed. Well, it's only three minutes away, so. There you go. I kind of had, I think it's like literally right there, so. Yeah. It's starting to warm up enough. There's a parking lot like right across the street at a brewery. Brewery. Tough word to say, actually. There's so many words I can't say. Dude. My wife made, uh, Beef bourguignon. I'm not even trying to be funny. I can't say the word. Bur- bur-ing- bur-ing- I swear I have a speech pad about Beef three- bourguignon. I hate talking on camera because I feel like I'm the worst talker ever. Because I like slur over words. I sound like I'm drunk. You're doing great today, but I think that's because it's Oops. not like I'm like, here's what you have to say, go. You're oh, just saying right whatever you want to say, say, which makes it easier. I did notice that. I wasn't going to say anything, but yeah. It's okay. She was fine. She gave me a little. <laughs> it's Canada. Accidents happen, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's like my seatbelt. You're on a hot street, texting and driving, no seatbelt. It almost hit someone. You're okay. We'll figure it out. Oh my god. No flustered. What's this guy doing? Uh, they're probably like surveyors. Engineer, surveyor type things. Look at this view, eh? It's actually phenomenal down here. Yeah. I mean, I am be honest. Vancouver, really this whole west coast, like, why would you ever live in Toronto? That's uh, how I always say it. I think it's I'm like, dude. coming from Toronto, I don't know why you'd ever live there. No. Are you from Toronto too? I'm from north of Toronto, like an hour. Yeah, okay. A little town called Uxbridge. Yep. 
kind of just been living all over the place though since like I don't even know when I was like young mm -hmm. just been jumping around I mean I guess to answer your question from when we we're living there traveling that's kind of what is like my one favorite thing like I love just going new places Here. all change plans Slight change plans, different pitch and butt, but you know what? They're all kind of the same. Yep, they, they really are. But, uh, I mean, you said you can't really like lift heavy, but do you do any like mobility or any like... Uh, golf is my mobility. Yeah, because you're super mobile. Yeah, like I don't have an issue with like flexibility and stuff. Like I've always been, is this a one way? <laughs> if it is, like, I'm driving like a NASCAR driver, like, <laughs> taking hot corners. I don't really know. I think it is one way. I think everything's one way here, to be honest. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm, I'm like pretty, I've had, I've been pretty good with no injury, no type of like big problems that like have set me back with like limitations with my body. So mm -hmm. that's beautiful in here. Yeah, um, so I haven't had to, when I was golfing full time, like I used to play professionally, mm -hmm. played for three years and I used to do quite a bit of like yoga and like that type of strength work. It's like, obviously if you're doing yoga a lot, it's actually like pretty damn good for you. So even like bench press, you can't do with your. It's head. like it's the like built up right. Like I could probably do like lighter low set or like high set low weight low weight, but I've just never been into like weightlifting stuff. Right. Like I've just been I'm like a you know, man. Yep. Fair. Um, You're more like a French fry probably. Yeah, that's you true. Know, potatoes, like a, been yeah, cut yeah, out. like a McDonald's French fry. Yeah, not very nice round. Yeah. Nimble man. Nimble. <laughs> Nimble. Yeah. Quick on your feet. Um, yeah, I, I, plus like, I don't need, I mean, if I did get bigger, I could probably hit it further, but my club head speed is like, you already hit it really far, right? When I'm, when I'm maxed out, like I used to get up to like 130 mile right. per hour club head speed. Like I wasn't slow by any means. I was mm -hmm. like, I've always been plenty fast enough where I don't need to. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like Grant, like Grant doesn't lift weights. Nope. He used to, but he, I was actually talking to him about it in Pebble. Like he, guy just. He doesn't touch weights anymore. He doesn't yeah. need to. Like he, he does. His body does what it needs to. He doesn't have injuries. Right. So he's also like 23. It's young. Yeah. yeah. He could have injuries. That's true. One day. One day. Yeah. I think it probably gets more important the older you get. 100. percent When you're like 50, you, I think your body needs. to But I also do think if you're like consistently putting it through the ringer, like golf. By me, like golfing pretty well every day. Like when I'm in peak season, it's just constantly moving. So I've never really had like back problems or. I've had a couple like freak ones where I like pop the floater rib out, um, that kind of thing, but mm -hmm. it's never been anything like overly serious. So, park bass to update it. <laughs> I extended my hotel one more night. Nice. Old Vancouver morning traffic. Yeah, you gotta love it. You gotta love it. Legitimately out of nowhere. Like right. It, it was. Uh, what was the impetus for it starting? Like, how did it start? I don't know. So I moved back from New Zealand, um, kind of like late summer 2020, like mm -hmm. in the middle of the pandemic, I was like the last flight out of New Zealand. And then I was sitting around teaching golf in an indoor facility in Toronto. And then we went into like this strict lockdown where I couldn't, I couldn't even teach cause like everything indoor was shut. Yeah. Toronto everything. Was bad, it was but... bad. Right. So I was like, kind of in this weird place. I couldn't travel anywhere because all the countries are closed. I have good friends of mine, a couple that um, they live in Dubai. They've been there for seven years in the golf industry. Um, Alex Riggs, he coaches Steph Curry actually. Yeah, yeah, I've heard the name. Yeah, Alex Riggs and Claudine. So they're Canadian. They've been in Dubai for like eight years at the time. I messaged Riggs and I was like, hey man, like what's Dubai like right now? Because I see that they're open as long as you have like the whatever the COVID tests and stuff before you fly. They're like, yeah, it's all good. You just follow the rules and like, because golf courses are open, malls are open, everything's open. Like, yeah, you just have to be uh, like follow the rules. I'm like, I'm there. So I booked a one way ticket December or November, end of November 2020. Yeah, to Dubai, and I started just posting golf videos because I was had nothing else better to do. Right. Um, literally nothing else better to do. I was like just bored in my tree. Yeah. So I was like hanging out at the Els Club every day. I got a membership for like they gave me like a pro rate. It was like 300 bucks a month. <laughs> Unlimited golf, range balls, practice facility, all that. Wow. And I started just like, yeah, just legitimately hitting balls pretty well uh, every day and just filming everything. And then my account just like 
I was at like literally 300 followers and I just slowly started like growing a little bit. I had a couple videos that went like pretty viral um, from there. And then I left Dubai March 2021. So I was there for like the entire winter. Mm -hmm. And I had like, I don't know, 5,000 followers and I just kind of like kept going after that. I started, I went to Bear Mountain in Victoria because my buddy was one of the pros there. Mm -hmm. Started just like posting videos from there and then I think I just hit like the niche market at the right time where like people were sitting around not able to golf themselves mm -hmm. and they were like viewing golf. Mm -hmm. and, well, and so many people in places that were open were getting into golf because it was the only thing they could Exactly. Do. So I just hit like it at the right time. It was never the world that I wanted or expected to be in. Like it was very much just like it happened out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, a friend of mine, she came to Dubai with me. Um, she played in the LPGA Tour for a bit. Her name's Rebecca Lee Bentham. She was like number one Canadian female before Brooke Henderson came along. Wow. Um, played Team Canada and stuff. She had like 11,000 followers on Instagram and like my goal was to pass her for followers. <laughs> so that was like the reason I actually started it. That's funny. To pass her for followers. And then, yeah, we you just- did that? We passed it pretty quick and then uh, I just kind of kept it going, I guess. I mean, I post a lot because I have opportunities to post a lot. Yeah. I don't want like to video stuff and never post it because it just, I'm like conscious of one post a day. I just, I just sling it. I just yeah. fire out videos as much as I can on social media, so. What's the most viral video you've ever had? Was it that Wesley and whole yeah, one trick shot Wesley, video? Wesley, myself, and Josh Kelly. Um, that one went pretty nuts. I think it's all like half a million likes or something, which I don't get viral very often. I get just consistency. Right. Which, to be honest, I think I prefer because then you build like a proper fan base of yeah, people. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, I feel like the viral stuff when we're talking about negative comments probably brings in a lot in the negativity as well. Dude, I, I, cause I like, you know how the algorithm works. Like the odd, you'll get like a video that you don't even expect to go like, you'll hit the explore page or Facebook or whatever and it's all of a sudden like cranking out tons of views and you start just getting guys who just abuse you. And it's funny, like I, I mm -hmm. laugh at it, but it's, uh, it's definitely the, um, <laughs> the weird part about it for sure when you have your first couple viral videos and you're yeah. like what just happened well, that's the nice thing about youtube is it doesn't really work that way like no, you don't get that not the same kind of like virality like you can but it's like it's it's just different like it doesn't do it the same way social media does and like dude i'm not even on social media like i have no presence at all like i have an instagram account that i like post pictures of my dog to and yeah, like, that's yeah, yeah. it like i'm the I'm probably I could probably be doing such a better job, but I just like have no idea what I want to post, and like I just don't have a, like a desire to. And also, I just don't like social media. Like I've played around with TikTok a little bit, and like man, it's just Dude, like, it's the most it's toxic place. So in the world. negative, it's crazy. Well, you, and you just get abused by twelve-year-olds. Yeah, exactly. which it, that is like the biggest thing for me is like, um, like uh, my following. I actually have quite a ma mature following. Yeah, I would say do. like I my following is like a on like Instagram is. I think the, my biggest range or age gap or range is like the 25 to like 40 or whatever. Yeah. So it's like older. It's not like the younger. Yeah. Um, which because of that, like I don't get a ton of like the weird comments, but mm -hmm. TikTok is like, you're just getting abused by 12 year olds. Yeah. It's like, yeah. what is going on? Yeah. Who raised you? Why do you do it? You kind of touched on this earlier, but the call out stuff, you're well, like I, one of the few people that do it. Well, because yeah. there's no accountability online and like the thing that one thing that really bothers me with social media is we live in a world right now where it's become okay to like just spew negative stuff online mm -hmm. because the big accounts have a PR teams running their accounts they're not the ones that are actually seeing it right or they just delete and block or yeah. like whatever when I'm like what lessons learned like that right. like they're just gonna keep doing it mm -hmm. and I've found since like giving them proper call outs where I like literally tag them mm -hmm. and make it the like most obvious thing ever that they're, they're just being a piece of mm -hmm. that the hate in my page has dropped because I think it does get around right and like we talked about before the amount of people who are actual haters online is yeah. it's quite minimal yeah so you start weeding out a couple of them it does actually really help and yeah. now times that I call people out and they immediately send me a message being like hey man can you please take that down like I was just kidding I'm having a bad day I'm sorry like it's it's crazy how yeah. many people like immediately try to take <laughs> back what they said because they're not used to being called out yeah and then at least they'll maybe think about doing it and again like sometimes it won't work and then it's, that's when I'll block them but mm -hmm. it's like at least try to give them that little attention that they want and see yeah. if it like makes them think twice before calling other people out maybe mm -hmm. But like I see it all the time. Like I, I'll see somebody who 
abuses me a little bit and then I'll go to like a Micah video and mm -hmm. it's the same guy abusing Micah. Yeah. So I'm like, this is just a guy who's clearly in a dog fight with his own life. Yeah, 100%. But again, I, I, like I said before, I do not understand why people need to be such assholes. Like it mm -hmm. just doesn't make sense to me. Like why hate on someone you don't know? It just, mm -hmm. it, I can't understand that concept, but that's my reason. And I'll probably continue to do it. I don't do it unless it's like a pretty vulgar thing or something that I found funny. Yeah. Would you, what, what advice would you give someone who's like just getting into that like realm where they're starting to see potentially negative comments? Just honestly continue to be yourself and don't let it get you. You have to look at it, turn it into like feeling bad for that person. Yeah. Cause you're never getting criticized by someone who's more successful than you or right. someone who loves their life more than you. It's always the bottom feeders of the world. Mm -hmm. So I always say like, you have to quickly spin it around, put yourself in their shoes. They're probably someone who's been absolutely bullied their entire life and like they've been on the receiving end of it and they feel like they're getting back at you. Mm -hmm. So I've had a lot of like guys who've abused me. I've had conversations with them in the DMs about like, why are you being like this? And they spin a total 360 and come back being like uh, your best friend. Right. Because you showed them a little bit of attention and like showed that you're just a normal, relatable person. Yeah. And then because of that, they're just like instantly fans of you because you like replied to them or like, I, I think I've probably spun around like hundreds of people just yeah. from like giving them the time of day because they're just not used to the attention. So. Act the vigilante. Yeah. I mean, you gotta do it, man. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You gotta do it. It's, uh, it's the only way. Emails? Yeah, just non-stop. And that's the thing, like, I don't, I do a lot of it on my own. I do everything on my own still. Um, I think, like, it's just found that it's, like, easier slash harder. I'm, I like building relationships on my own with, like, companies and stuff. And mm -hmm. I feel like, I mean, it's intimidating, obviously, but um, I think I don't want to lose my own, like, touch on things. And I right. think having people look after, like, all my backend stuff is just just doesn't do it for me. Do you find it hard to like figure out how to like price yourself and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, because I undervalue myself because at the yeah. end of the day I just see myself as just a dude that plays golf. Like I'm not important, I'm not a doctor, I'm not saving lives, I'm not a lawyer that's like getting people out of trouble. Like I'm literally just a useless guy posting freaking daily spam on Instagram. So mm -hmm. I have a hard time valuing myself and some of the numbers I see these people throwing around is just absolutely ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Like it's, um, yeah, it's it's insane. The, mm -hmm. But I don't know. It's a. Uh, I I think the probably the hardest part is like valuing myself at like a decent amount, just because mm -hmm. like, and I know my reach is good now, and I know I could, but I just don't do it for the money. So and I'll never do it for the money as long mm -hmm. as I have enough to get by. I'm pretty happy. Mm -hmm. That's why I always say I'm the lowest budget social media person ever. All these other guys driving around their fancy cars and like live their fancy lives. This is my car though. You should see my junk. You should see the, I drive a 2010 BMW back home that's like completely paid for, like absolute hunk of trash. Um, I'm lucky with this, don't yeah, yeah, yeah. but I don't, uh, Sponsorship. I, I don't like the finer things, that's for sure. I'm, yeah. I'm more of a... What's the most exciting brand partnership you've landed? Honestly, TaylorMade since like day one has been like, just, I when I played professionally, I used their clubs. When I taught full time, I was on staff with like their PGA professional thing. So it's like been a relationship that's like been through my entire golf journey, I guess. So it's been really cool when I signed with them. Like I was actually the first signed TaylorMade athlete that wasn't on the PGA Tour. That's a fun fact. Like huh. I was before Grant, Mike, all those guys. Four play? Like, before four play. Wow. Um, Officially, so I'm like, I was kind of like the OG guy that from like social media world that kind of got in there. Wow. Um, which is cool because like it's a cool brand to be a part of for sure. Um, but honestly, Primo, the clothing company that I rep, yeah. Um, they, when I first met them, they were just like a sample company in the suitcase essentially. Like they were a brand new company. I was brand new to social media, and it's been really cool growing with them through like the day one it's a company I'll stick with forever right and again similar like it's funny now that like Grant Micah and I but we all kind of have the same partners like yeah. they're tailor-made they're primo but 
at the office, I always say this, Graham, like, I like, they have all their, like, athletes, and mm-hmm. I'm, like, the first, yeah. first one on the wall. Yeah. Um, but I would say Primo. The, the guys you own Primo are just absolute beauties. They're, like, my age, just, like, wicked guys, and they, uh, they've done really cool things. Mm-hmm. I think you're a lot like me where like a lot of your partners are on like longer term like more athlete style contracts but what like I'm assuming you get one off deals pitched to you all the time what's like the craziest one off deal you ever had pitched so to you I don't get to be honest because I don't want to be a sellout I hate that social media is flooded by people being like here try this CBD oil right. like for me I get it like a little like things here and there it's fine especially in the early days just to, like make a couple extra bucks or whatever it is for me I don't have a lot of one-offs. Like my goal was to have five core brands Mm -hmm. that like are part of my brand. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be that guy who's like pushing. I don't drink. I don't gamble. Mm -hmm. I don't smoke. I don't do any, like I'm pretty like surface level, clean, good, clean living for the most part. Yeah. So for me, like a lot of the money in social media is from like alcohol, gambling, (laughs) or like that kind of industries. So I actually did do like a, um, beer one did like a Sleeman one because my brother is like loves beer so I actually incorporated him in the video that one was pretty funny I like put him he doesn't golf and I just made him like play golf with me yeah and the video did quite well because it was just so ridiculous yeah I remember that you were like chipping in the backyard into like I a- did one last year with a different beer company and we actually brought him to the golf course and yeah he's just like he's a loose cannon so but yeah, I haven't had any like crazy one-off ones to be honest. Have you I've had, had some any cool one-off events, you, like just a crazy amount of money to do something. Not really, honestly. I don't. I don't get like a massive like offers because I don't even allow it to get to that point. Right. Like I kind of shut it down immediately. Right. I think the coolest like, I went to Pakistan. Oh. So I'd say most of my like wild collaboration type stuff has been for like events. Yeah. So two years ago I went on a trip to Pakistan for the grand opening of a Nick Faldo golf course flew in a private jet with Nick Faldo Graham McDowell Charlie Hall Ralph Cabrera Bayo all their like teams yeah and then me on this private jet flying from Dubai to uh, yeah to uh, pack Multan Pakistan for this grand opening played in the pro-am did like this whole stuff like walk the golf course with Nick like yeah just like the most well, I remember sitting on the plane being like what is this like yeah. this is it's so insane that like I could you can do this from social media so that's probably the wildest one huh. I'd say for sure is that very interesting that is crazy yeah it's like that was nuts <laughs> I'm gonna say are we gonna be those guys that just no, like entire I'm, golf bags I'm on bringing the... a wedge yeah I might put them in the trunk actually no we don't get stolen putter wedge and a putter that's all I'm bringing These all right two. I'll match you. Yeah, 56 and putter? Yeah? Yeah, I like it. Well, I mean, one ball, are we gonna lose any? You're the one club guy. Didn't you play an entire professional round with just I a did. driver? I did, I shot 73 with I, next invitation this year. I was playing with Micah. Yeah. Micah and I got paired together. Um, I used just a driver for the front nine. It's a 7,600 yard course. So it was like a big boys golf course. Mm-hmm. Um, shot three over with just using driver, tee to green, everything. Just carrying a driver, didn't even have a golf bag. I had three balls in my back pocket. <laughs> and then uh, back then I'm like, okay, I need to try to get this round back to like somewhere close to even. So I added a putter, or sorry, no putter, a wedge and a seven wood, mm-hmm. just a wedge and a seven wood. Put them over my shoulder and uh, what, 56 or 54? I'll probably bring it just so that I can uh, put my clubs in it while I'm holding the camera. Very good point. Yeah. Do you want to carry all your clubs? Do you want to put your clubs in here? No, it's fine, I'll just carry them. It'll be easier okay. just with holding the camera. I'll look like that weirdo try hard that's like, I need my driver out of pitch and butt. I think you should use the driver. Yeah, well, um, you can if you want. Yeah, so then back nine, three clubs, put them over my shoulder like this. I shot two under in the back, shot 73. I eagled the last hole. <laughs> with a, went driver, driver seven wood, and then made the seven wood pot down the hill. And uh, yeah, 73 with, it was one of the lowest scores of the day at the pro event. I don't want to talk about the first two rounds, but using full sets club <laughs> trying to play proper golf that's life do you feel like it just frees you up having like yeah, less 100 the less i think the better like i yeah. i've got some cool youtube stuff coming out like i've done a couple pretty decent rounds where i've just been like messing around with like a couple clubs and like i find that i like am able to shoot just as just as good to be honest. Yeah. so 
Yep. It's, uh, that's the job done. Yep. Well, I'm excited to see what you pull off on 50 yard holes here. Yeah. That's no like kidding. probably one of the things I was most excited for is just to watch it in real life. Yeah. It's, watch uh, the Mac voucher videos in real life. Well, do you see like even the four play guys, their pods, they put out their pod today. I've played with rigs in that 100 hole hike a couple yeah. of the last couple of days. And like, again, I think people see it online and they're like, okay, like, no. <laughs> yeah, right. But then they see it in person. And I think rigs was like, you put, like, talked about it a bunch. So I was like, <laughs> Little I care. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Warm up complete? Complete. I don't know if it warmed us up or cold us, made us colder, to be honest. <laughs> That's actually a really good point. I think it was, a, it was a cool down, but you know, you hit a couple balls. You're saying you haven't hit a driver in like a month or something crazy? Uh, it's been a while. It's been so I was back in Ontario um, seeing my family because I hadn't been home for a while and the courses were pretty much all shut there. So most of the golf I've been playing has been, uh, hasn't really been happening lately been kind of my down period before I really get back on it again. So it'll be good to actually go play some proper golf because obviously I did that 100 hole hike, it was just wedges. Really that's all I've done the last little while, so. Do you get do you get burnt out of golf playing so much? No, I love it. I'm just a guy who like, again, this is like the big thing that I preach is like, what you see is what you get. Like I, I love golf. I will go out play by myself. I'll play with randoms. I'll play with pretty much anyone and I don't really get tired of it. Like when I'm over on the island, kind of my home track there at Bear, Bear Mountain, it's like I could go out there for 12 hours a day and just do my own thing and never get sick of it. Right. I'm just like a golf junkie. Yeah. It's like my happy place. I think, uh, and I'm, I don't mind being on my own. I'm quite introverted. So it's like the one place that I can like just go do my own thing and feel like I do whatever I want, which is nice. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to watch you Mac Boucher this round of golf here. It's going to be really fun. We're going to just whack it around, see if we try to put up a number. It'd be nice to, I still love scoring, but I like scoring after hitting good shots. Yeah. Like cool shots that are like unique. And a lot of the stuff I do, like we'll go over this when we actually go to the golf course and play, but, and I'll walk you through some of the processes. A lot of the big like shapes and stuff are intentional, not just for fun. They're, they serve a purpose because it eliminates one side of the golf course or it's like, there's reasons for things I do. It's not just for like Instagram views. That's not why I do stuff. Gotcha. So it'll be cool to kind of show you that stuff. Sure. Tro lime chicken bowl. Crispy or grilled chicken? Uh, grilled. Grilled, please. And then I'll do a crispy chicken craveable. The crispy craveable, okay. And then a, um, just a medium dark roast. Yeah. Medium dark roast. Yeah, how would you like in it? Uh, just black? Yeah. Just black. Just black, okay. Anything else? And then medium iced coffee made with milk, please. Medium iced coffee with milk? Yeah. Anything else? That's all, thanks. Thank you, Trevor. Please. Thank you. We couldn't go a whole day of Mac without Tim Hortons. Though. I'm gonna be honest, when I'm in Canada, I rep Tim Hortons twice a day, minimum. <laughs> minimum. <laughs> Again, I'm not even joking. Like, I went through my last year, I did a met with my accountant. Okay. And, um. Got a little PP whack for the Tim's visits? No, he literally like went through my entire state bank statement for the year and he's like, this is insane. He's like every single, he's like, do you not spend money on anything other than Tim Hortons? I was like, nah, completely, I really don't. It's just Tim Hortons. It's a weird addiction I've got. I don't drink, I don't smoke. So I'm like, Tim Hortons is my vice. What are your top three, top three menu items, drinks or food, doesn't matter. I'm a bagel guy in the morning. Okay. Medium iced coffee for sure. Like I love iced coffee, but um, crispy chicken craveable. Mm -hmm. And then just like a normal bagel in the morning. Those are like the only three I really got. I don't do donuts. Yeah, you don't like donuts? 
I, I'm not, like I'm okay with donuts. I was thinking though, like when uh, Justin Bieber did like the Biebs bits or yeah. whatever they're called. Like imagine sling bits. Yeah, man, absolutely. I mean, I do think, a little promo where you're putting them on a. TV I've been so them. it's funny. I've been trying to get a Tim Horton sponsorship for like ever. I'm like, why can't they just do it? And then I was I in like Dubai. They only sponsor Bieber and Buble. That's like it. Yeah, and but like, like in Dubai, because there's a bunch of Tim Hortons in Dubai, Middle East Tim Hortons are a little different, but I tagged them a bunch there and they're like, can you come to corporate office? We'd love to have a meeting with you. And then I actually had to leave Dubai, so I didn't end up doing it. So I almost got sponsored by Tim Hortons Dubai, Middle East, which would have been wild. Yeah, wild. feels a little bit, you know, I don't know, minor I league though, minor yeah. league Tim. So 100%. you, got, it's, you it's gotta like, get the real deal, man. You deserve it, you're Canadian. I don't, don't res- settle for the Dubai. Tim I don't Hortons. understand why they won't just give me a man. Yeah. Yeah. Total bull Beaver, Buble, and Boucher. That's Boucher. it, sling bets, man. Sling bets. Boucher, there we go. Boucher, no French for me. <laughs> How do you say it? Boucher. Oh, okay. Like a voucher with a B. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's what but I But everyone saying. just assumes it's I Boucher. Thought, I thought you, yeah, I thought you were about to pronounce it in French. Like, everyone who pronounced it online pronounces it properly if they know me. Yeah. They're like, it's Be- Boucher. I'm like, no, they're they're doing it right. They're, they know what's up. All right. Thanks. Is it a rarity that you that you don't get recognized at golf courses now? Yeah, I mean, it depends where I am. Toronto, like Ontario, it's like nonstop. Yeah, but I, I do find that even like if I'm in any city now, it's, I get at least approached a couple times a day. Golf courses depends on like the age demographic. Like, yeah. if I'm Vancouver's, like a, a lot of time I see a lot more like older demographics, so they're out of the loop, but. I know about you, but my audience is so much more American. When I go to the States, I can recognize like every time I go to a course. Here, it's like one in every three, probably. Yeah, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's like a ton here just because the demographics are older, but yeah. I won't be surprised if it's uh, got a few Mac Voucher fans out there. From the, the peasant. I love how we're just playing from the tips, I guess. That's, I mean, we got it, right? 7,000 yards. And is it 7,000? 10 Cold. degree weather. Yeah. 10. Uh, that's pushing it 10. It, yeah, pushing <laughs> 10 is pushing that it. You're right. It's got to be zero right now. Yeah. It's pretty cold. It's pretty cold. But I mean, look at this place. Yeah, it's pretty. You got the mountains in the background. It's unreal. Yeah, it is unreal. What do you, uh, what do you think you're going to shoot today, Mac? <laughs> uh, between. <laughs> Should we set an over under? Yeah, let's set an over under. Let's go 75. Really? I was going to go 71. No, God, no, no. I was going to take the over, though. I'm going 75, and I'm taking the over. Okay. I'll take the under. I'll take the under just to, you know. I think I, uh, I'm just, I'm a, I can get erratic, and I think it's like. This is a tough course to get erratic on. I'm not going to lie. Good. There's a bit of, uh, I need to hear. Bit of, bit I actually of, haven't bit even played the front nine, because I played the back nine when I was here. Oh, yeah, yeah, the front nine's more, more trouble than the back nine. More trouble. More trouble not what I need to hear. <laughs> um, it's going to be fun. Yeah, I think realistically depends how focused you can keep me. Well, I think I think that Brett, my biggest problem and I you'll you'll soon find out is I don't stay focused for very long. Yeah. And that's generally what I've heard. speaking, when the focus loses, I can hit some wildly impressive shots, but I can hit some ones that you're just like what did you just do? Right. And I'm totally okay with that, but it just depends what kind of Mac you want to show up today. Yeah. Do you want erratic Mac or do you want like guy who just hitting boring like vanilla greens and regulation? I don't know. Is there any like decision factors that go into when you're going to hit? Like why on this hole are you going to hit? What are you going to hit on this hole? That's what I'm trying, I, to be honest right now, I do have, I'm probably actually going to go mini driver. Okay. Just because I, I know there's a pond up the right, driving range up the left. There is a little bit of room up the left. It's only 400 15 yards so it's not an overly long golf hole so even if i like kind of hit like a weak little cut out there i'm only gonna have like 150 160 yards in which is like a nine iron or eight iron so it's it's really not that uh there shouldn't be a lot of thought the problem is that it's soft and cold out here like yeah the ball gonna is gonna be pl- it's gonna be plug city out here i can tell so what's like i think a lot of people would be curious though like when do you decide to hit a sling versus not is there so it's missing so it? i know I curve the ball because it helps me control where my miss is. People try to perfect straight and then they struggle with a double miss. They have like an open face, close club face, like their path changes. So with driver, I call it my safety slice. 97% of the time, 
when I hit a big cut off the tee, my miss is gonna be an overcut. So if it's OB down the right, mm -hmm. I can cancel out the right side of the golf course. Right. And it'll leak to like left rough at worst. Right. Um, same for the sling, my miss is an over sling. So if it's a pond right and it's in play, I'm not slinging it to that pin. Right. I'm gonna cut it to that pin because my miss is left. So it's, it's always playing to where my miss is. And I think, I, I'm a firm believer that amateur golfers, if they could understand their miss and play to a miss mm -hmm. and play to a shape, they would be a lot better players because okay. people try to perfect like perfect and there's no such thing as perfect <laughs> at all well, so the, the shapes are they serve a purpose and you'll see it out there like i'll explain different situations pin locations wind why like, there's a lot of factors for me but i also can just get erratic and just go for swinging anything and if i just feel like it's a, a good one i'll just rip a big sling for the fun of it so love it Suiting your, your twist, twist. The problem is, we're gonna look. This tree might be uh, impeding. I love a right pin. Yep. For sure. Um, oh yeah, I kind of forgot your the, with the lefty. I thought this tree was gonna be a okay, problem. From the right side of his deck, or yeah, from the right side of his deck, I should be. Yeah. See, this is a perfect hole for me. Yeah. Generally. I was totally wrong. It's 140 to the center. Yeah, I kind of figured it. I don't really use a laser very often, so. Um, yeah, I think. So what are you gonna hit? What's oh, like the idea? So this hole here, we have room for me to land this thing left. Yeah. People would be like, why don't you just aim straight at it? Straight at it for me brings in like multiple misses. Okay. Generally from this lie or from this like position, I'm gonna hit a hook. It's gonna land left of this pin and juice right. If I over commit, mm -hmm. it's gonna spin right and it'll just be right side fringe rough whatever it's fine it's not on the water mm -hmm. if i try to cut one my miss is i come out of it i could end up chunky short left okay and then i'm i'm bringing a double into count so here there's zero chance of making double all right again i don't really know how far the ball is going right now but for some reason i feel like this is like a little bit scary what about this tree right here no i'll be able to peel it just i'm gonna trim the tree all right start line i'm very very like comfortable with. so it's gonna kind of start just under this hanging limb Land on the just left of this flag, and it should end up all right. All right. Yeah, that's cool. That should sit. And then juice a little right. Pin high. It's, again, people will look at me like I'm crazy, but I can, can I pretty much say exactly what I'm yep. going to do when I do it, right? So it's, um, it's something I've practiced and I've refined to make like my own and it works for me so that's what that's what all the golf coaches say to do too right you see it before you talk through it say exactly what you're going to do and that helps yeah and you. I, like i think about it like for me i can see my landing zone yeah. it's a wedge it shouldn't be that difficult for me to hit that spot with a wedge and yep. yes i can go straight at it but generally my miss with straight at it is like i come out of it mm -hmm. maybe catch a little heavy and my miss could be that short left this is gonna i'm gonna trap it ball's still gonna carry and generally i can hit my spots so. yeah, full take them all out and show me but i feel like i gotta do a what's in the bag i just realized that should probably get a little i mean i see mainly because i see boards which makes a lot of sense now that i think about it yeah, with I all the so shape I'm, that you put on them but i'm self-taught um i learned on blades so i've always played blades i can't look at anything too chunky so yeah p7 mbs from five iron down to nine iron mm -hmm. um and i have the mg4 in 56 52 and 46, I have a pitching wedge in the MG4. Mm -hmm. They're all stamped with some cool stuff. Yeah, that was it. Um, and then I use a 60 degree high toe. Kind of always use that. Then this is kind of where it gets a little weird. So I have a two iron that comes in on windy courses. I'll take that in and out. Seven wood, which is like my favorite club in the bag. I love mm -hmm. this thing. It's, uh, and then we have my old trusty three wood. <laughs> so it's funny, my tailor made contract, when I signed with them, 
I'm on 12 club contract, so it gives me a little bit of wiggle room, but in my contract, it says exotics three wood is allowed to say. So I've had this for 13 years. I used it when I played professionally and it's like, it's my baby. I love that thing. <laughs> uh, then I go mini driver, um, just because I get a little erratic with driver. I'm like a one trick pony with driver. I only hit high cuts. So yep. this allows me to hit draws, which is really nice. And then stealth two driver, stealth two plus. And I putter changes weekly, so I won't even show you that because it's probably not gonna be in the bag next time I even post a video. It did, it was a strange looking putter on the the grip and everything. Yeah, like, What's yeah, going on here? Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's just kind of a mixed bag, but obviously TaylorMade takes pretty good care of me. But they've also given me some nice wiggle room that I can kind of use the stuff I want to use as well, like that exotic three wood, which is really cool. I just don't have the consistency because I, A, don't have the discipline. People don't understand how much discipline goes into pro golf. And I think it's always funny, like reading the comments, like when guys are like, why isn't this guy in the tour? Or like, I see it on like other comments and like, people don't understand that like tour golf and guys who, a good scratch golfer, it's crazy. Yes, I can go out and compete against guys, but no chance could I like, if you were to play seven straight days with a guy in the PJ Tour, I would get waxed. Right. Wouldn't even become. It wouldn't even be close. I might beat him one round if I just go out there and go into like my little blackout mode and like make a ton of birdies. And it's happened before. But as a whole, I'm five shots worse consistently all the time to those guys. It um, is. It is interesting though because we were just talking about it. you do have the the course record at the seventh oldest golf course in the world. That's People true. Don't I know do. That. I've actually got a few course records. Like I, I used to have the ability when I played full time and. It's something like I guess I'm pretty proud of. Like I've always had the ability to go low. Like I can, I can make a ton of birdies because of my style of play. I can get to pins that other people can. I can. It's just really depending on a if I can stay focused long enough, which I generally can't because I rather just like mess around, and have a laugh, or if the putter's working because the putter can get real erratic. Yeah. Real erratic, like embarrassingly erratic. So. Does it bother you that you said like you think the brand is is that you don't play good golf on some level or some people have Yeah, that so assumption? my goal now, like now that I've built the following, I'm like comfortable in what I'm doing. I want to get into tournaments again where like I'm going to go, I have a couple sponsor exemptions into PJ Tour Canada events next year. Yeah. Um, like similar to what like Micah played in this year. Yep. I have like two lined up for that and I want to start doing some Monday qualifiers and stuff because I know when I'm playing well and focused. I think that's the big thing is I just have to focus in. Mm -hmm. Um. I think I have the capability of like still putting up scores, especially now when I'm not playing for a living anymore. Right. I'm playing, it's not to put food on the table. Right. It's to prove to myself, prove to like the haters online that like there's a half decent player. I'm not pretending to be some superstar because I'm furthest thing from that, but I think I can still go out there and compete and like put up good numbers. So why are you trying to get into YouTube ball? Why not just stay on Instagram? Like what's the pull to create the YouTube channel? Um, I just think I haven't, capitalize and like I know I have a personality that like I don't show who I actually am on Instagram my Instagram is strictly me just like posting highlights of my rounds and things I'm proud of and it doesn't it doesn't showcase who I am and I'm a pretty private person like it's it's not about like showing my whole lifestyle because that's not important but I have some cool opportunities at cool golf courses around the world and know a lot of cool people within the industry and think I can kind of tell a cool story with it so I think the long form stuff is just something that is important for me to just kind of showcase more than just a short little Instagram blip I guess what what are you gonna do on the channel like what's kind of the plan so for the content I, I'm gonna have like a big umbrella um, in the early days I know everyone says to be consistent you gotta like do the same thing to build the brand but I think I have a lot of different things to give I talk golf for a living I play professionally for a living I mess around, play golf for fun. I played other sports, so I like want to interact with like people from other um, kind of walks of life that play golf. So it's going to be like a wide range of things, um, different series. Like I know I'm 
trying to get my right-handed golf game down to a scratch. I want to become a scratch righty and lefty. That's like a big goal of mine. So I want to do a righty series where I uh, try to break or get to scratch right-handed by the end of 2024. <laughs> so I want to document that. Just like a wide variety of things and then just kind of see what's clicking, I guess. Yeah. But in the early days, it's just going to be just me being me and I'm going to make these videos for myself and people don't want to watch it, then that's fine. I don't really care. It's, it's for me more than anything. What about current YouTube golf do you not like slash would like to improve on or just do differently in your own content? I'm gonna be honest, I don't know a ton about the YouTube world. I don't watch YouTube golf, I never have. I don't watch a lot of golf to begin with, uh, whether it's even the PGA Tour golf, I just don't watch it. But I don't know, like, I think I obviously hung out with some of the different people from the YouTube space and they're all awesome people and it's, um, for the most part, I like the kind of direction it goes. People are like turning it into something that's very watchable and building pretty big fan bases that are like pretty cool, pretty big communities, which I really do like. Um, I think that's the big thing I like about it, is just like the community that people build. Um, and I don't really know like what needs to like work on it, to be honest. I think a lot of it's already there, I'd say. Yeah, for sure. If anyone's wondering why we just walked through the parking lot, so we're actually moving to a different course right now. That was, yeah. yeah, we had four foursomes backed up in front of us, so we're just going to the other side now to play the other course. And anyone who knows me knows, <laughs> I Nate seeing it firsthand, I am the fastest golfer in the history of golfer, confirmed. 100%. You think and you play fast? I think I play fast. No, not you, you, but like you at home. You think you play fast? I think I play fast. Mac plays 10 times faster. It's I just don't incredible. have patience for slow golf. And I mean, it gets dark at five o'clock or earlier now. Yep. And we had zero chance yep. of finishing this round of golf. We barely had a chance of finishing nine holes. In that We're probably gonna have to go to the pro shop. Walk me through the uh, thought process when it's like, what you just did, we're like, ooh, this looks pretty. I'm gonna pull my tripod so out. So for me, like a lot of my just like stock videos are, I like showcasing a view. Like that's, I think my, I just love it like a, beautiful golf course like yeah. i think that's like such a cool thing about golf is like there's so many cool spots to go and like hit a shot from mm -hmm. so if i see like a spot that i think i can like kind of sculpts really well for a golf shot then i'll i love like just dropping the ball down and hitting it so talk me through this one this is a nice little henny one so that's a flyer lie if i've ever seen this thing could come out really jumpy the front pin i have no idea how far i am uh, i think i'm like 150 ish to the front pin yeah 150. it's gonna hit a little high cut nine iron in there all right. Hopefully, another green rag. Ah, hold it. Damn, that came out hard. Yeah. Last thought was just don't skull it. That's all I had. This could hit you. There's no, there is zero sand in here. All right. Yeah, just no sand. Zip. Right. Good zip. So you said you're gonna get into tournament play again. Yeah. What's like your biggest? I'm pretty sure I know what your biggest strengths are, but what's your biggest like weaknesses when it comes to like playing Patience. well? Patience. Care, like sense of care, like. Um. I feel like as I've gotten older, when I was, I played professionally for three years and like, I was able to focus for long enough. Like even amateur golf, I focused long enough. These bald eagles are nuts right now. Yeah, they're cool. Like, look at that. Oh, I think that was a very, uh, a very on brand moment when you're talking about your biggest problem with golf is keeping your attention in one place. I, I'm like, that was, that I, was something I, else. I very much struggle with like, yeah, I'm, I'm very, Attention deficit to like certain things and I'm like very fast twitch so I get out there I'll play normal golf I'm gonna say to myself like I'm gonna play normal today and then it's like four holes later and I'm like okay I'm gonna sling this 600 yards through a tree gap just because why the hell not 
we're brand new. Yeah, this is tough. I'm like tough course scenario yeah, for the white honest, kicks here. I'm very OCD with keeping things clean. Yeah, like I have severe OCD when it keeps to it. So like white shoes and a muddy golf course makes me like all I really think about and focus on the rest of this whole day is probably how clean my shoes are. So if you see me just constantly wiping these things for the next. Especially too, when I'm on the road, it's not like I have my whole wardrobe ready to go at home. Like I'm, I only have a few pairs of golf shoes to last me the next month on the road until I go back home. So Does that excuse count if you don't really have a home. You're just on the road all but a week of the year. Yeah, that's like true. I feel like you need to figure out a solution. Yeah, uh, it's, it's true. I, I go home, but it's like go home for a week, leave. Your solution home. is just get another pair of shoes sent to you by whoever's ever sending you shoes. That's true. That yeah, yeah that's, that's just, pretty. It just makes me like. I just love mountains, like, love mountains. White was a great choice today, bro. Dude, I only brought I don't have any black shoes with me. I don't I don't wear a lot of black shoes, like in general. What do you have against black shoes, man? Nothing. I like I like them when it's like wet and muddy. But like I'm a white shoe guy. <laughs> all the time. All the time. But that was a poor choice today. If I had black shoes, I would have worn them today, for sure. Alright. We need like a little brush station. Do they have that here? I don't know. Maybe it's stressed. Stress. Two under 17 holes, right? That's something we played today? Yeah, we didn't quite finish the 18, but. Or 16, maybe. 16 holes, I think. Yeah, 16. Two bogeys, four birdies. I mean. Is that like average for you? Yeah, if I'm just like out. I mean, I don't shoot under par every time. No chance. Like, there's days where I really don't have it. Where I will say lately, my game's been pretty good. Like, the last two months or so, I don't know what it is, but I've kind of like just found something that's a little bit more consistent. And I've been feeling a lot more like confident. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say I'm some under par, some over par, some a little bit in between, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yeah. Is it a lot about raising your ceiling playing pro golf? Or not your ceiling, your your bottom floor, I guess. People say that all the time where it's like the yeah. best in the world, they'll just never shoot above seventy five. Yeah, I mean we all like we've all been there. Like you will shoot. 81 it wasn't one point in your career like sure. everyone has a day that's the problem with golf and i think i don't know people have this unrealistic idea that like bad days don't happen sure and they totally do like they happen more frequently than good days i think i heard i think it was brooks kepko was saying like the other day that he's like um we miss every shot on the golf course the goal is to hit every shot in the hole right and realistically, the only shot you're making is like a tap and two foot or the odd time, 10, but you're trying to hit the ball in the hole from 150 yards. So technically we're missing every shot. Right. It's just by how much we're missing. Sure. So I think just narrowing down like your expectations is the big thing. And that's, for me, you see, like I see a friggin' mountain with some sun on it and that's what like gets me all horned up. Yeah, it's, it's, it was very interesting today to watch like how much more you were focused on getting the Instagram clips than like actually hitting the golf shots. Like you put way more time into hitting play on the on the camera than over the ball. Over the ball, you took two seconds and you still shot two under. So I really well, am curious to know what happens if you just like didn't have your phone fully or like you said in blackout mode. Like I, and I shoot. still like, I love getting, when I'm in black mode, mode phone doesn't come out. I'm just like yeah. fully, like that day at Crail. Like yeah. I did take some videos, but like I'm in this like routine where I'm just like feeling really good about it. And I, I didn't get any footage of it. Like literally I don't have, I, only evidence I have is the open key shot of the day because it looked good. A par three that I like, stuffed a seven wood, and other than that, it's like nothing. So for me, it's not even like I want Instagram clips. I want clips for my own yeah, memory. It's not right. nothing to do with 
just wanted to get a clip to go viral on Instagram. Like before, when I lived in New Zealand, I didn't even use social media, but I still filmed shots. Right. It's like, I just enjoy looking at them. It's for my own, like, like I told you earlier, like it's like a diary. Yeah. It's like my life journal by videos and pictures. And I think I just enjoy the game more when I'm able to go out there and just be creative, get different snaps of different things. And that's like, I mean, look at this. It's like, it's ridiculous right now. Not bad. And that's why you see, like I'm too under, but I'm like trying to go and get like a picture of, or a video from 160 yards from a bunker because it looks good and a good angle. Yeah. I'm gonna go right back to the hotel right now. Bring these in, just absolutely clean the Jesus out. Uh. Little fruit cup. Fruit cup. Where would this rank on like a, an average day of Mac voucher on the road? Yeah. Pretty standard. Yeah, golf. I mean, the purpose of the golf might be different, I would assume. Like if it's yeah, I mean, I, I play a lot of recreation golf still. Um, I'm definitely, I play a lot of solo golf if like I'm on the road, but it kind of depends where I am and what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, it would be, it would include golf for sure. It would include Tim Hortons <laughs> if I'm in Canada. Um, it would include me leaving my hotel room in the morning. Um, yeah, it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't be much different than this. Do you guys ever get lonely? Um, I'm very introverted. I love being left alone, which is such a weird thing to say because I'm in this world now where it's like the total opposite of that. Um, but it makes sense because it really the vibe I'm getting is that you really don't like attention. I hate attention. Yeah, I don't like. Which I think the hardest about... thing for me is like getting approached by people and not making it awkward. Yeah, right. Because I don't like talking in front of people. Public speaking is like the scariest thing ever for me. Being on camera talking is terrifying for me. I've gotten better, but so we're polar opposites in that way. <laughs> Dude, I like I have it's my all shtick. the respect <laughs> for people who are comfortable on camera or talk comfortable in like a talking situation cuz like I am not. Yeah, I'm probably more comfortable talking in front of 200 people than I am talking in front of 5. See, I'm I'm, I'm just not me. I've gotten better because I've had to get better, um, but I'm not at all close to like most people in the industry. Most people in the industry crave attention. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm just trying to get the address here. Um, most people like just, they need that constant energy or um, like be around people. They're very like extroverted. Am I right? Yeah, you're sure, right. You should be. Or no, left, sorry. I would say it's really? left. Is it's it telling like, you right? Yeah, it's going Okay, right. well, follow it. It knows traffic. Well, that's in power 16. Uh, it sounds about right, man, unfortunately. That's if there's right. like an accident or something. Especially to get back to your hotel. Downtown. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so I think for me, like most people in this industry, like they want that attention. They crave that attention. They love like, that's why they do it. Yeah. I post these videos for myself. Right. If I looked back two years ago when I started posting these videos, it wasn't to become a social media person. It wasn't become anything. It was literally to become something like it was my way of my creative outlet. I call it, call yeah. it where it was like I enjoy making the videos because it was like something that like was a good time passer. I'm a creative person, so if four people were watching it, I'd still probably be doing it because it's just like a cool thing that I like to do on the side. Mm -hmm. But and I get asked all the time like, how do I do what you're doing for a living? And I'm like, find your niche find like what is like your um what you're good at and what you like are passionate about and be yourself and mm -hmm. if you have something that's like unique you don't need to search for followers the followers will come mm -hmm. and i think that's like the big thing is like try to just be yourself because i hate how fake social media is yep <laughs> Thank you.